This video briefly explains how to cite a court case where a neutral citation is available. Recall that the McGill style requires you to find information about a source and write it out in a determined order. Be careful not to simply copy and paste information from a source, such as an online database. It is likely not McGill compliant. You may need to find parallel citations and look at the McGill guide for formatting requirements. For example, look at the citation provided by Canley. With a bit of research to find alternate sources and taking into account McGill formatting requirements, we can now build our new citation. The result is different than if the citation had just been copied and pasted from the database. Fortunately, referencing with a neutral citation means you don't need to add the year of the decision, the juris jurisdiction, or level of court. Even with a neutral citation, don't forget to properly format your case name. You also should include one or two additional parallel citations giving priority to sources that are highest in the McGill's hierarchy of sources. Let's now take a look at each step required for neutral citation. We will start with writing the name of the case using McGill formatting requirements. Then we will copy neutral citation exactly as is and add that to our reference. We will try to find parallel citations and add these as well. Then we double check that all proper punctuation is included. Here is the source we want to cite. Looking at this information, you can see that the neutral citation is available. You know it is neutral, a neutral citation because it includes the year, an abbreviation for the court, all in capital letters with no spaces, and a unique identification number assigned by the court. Not all decisions have neutral citations. Never make up your own neutral citation if it is not included in your source. Now that we know we have a neutral citation, we can get started. First, we need to write the case name. Here, one of the parties is a corporation. We will need to review the relevant McGill rules. Looking at the table of contents under the jurisprudence tab, we see that there are general formatting rules at page E51 and rules relating to corporations at page E52. After reviewing the relevant rules, we know that this is the proper format for the case name. We then need to copy and add the neutral citation which we have already identified. Here it is. We now need to add some parallel citations. We can see in our source that there are many available. Which of these citations should be included? McGill provides a hierarchy of sources. The order of importance of the sources is as follows. Neutral citation, official reporter, semi-official reporter, other print sources and online database identifiers. Note that according to section 381, a neutral citation or printed reporter should precede an online database identifier if available. We use this hierarchy to decide which citations to include and in what order. You will need to regularly consult the McGill Guide appendices to confirm whether reporters are official, semi-official, or other. 
You will also need to confirm the proper abbreviation for the reporters. Looking back to our source, we see that we have the SCR, an official print reporter. This should be included as a parallel citation if we wish to include uh, if we wish to include a third parallel citation, the DLR is a good choice because there is no semi-official reporter and the DLR is an official reporter that is widely available. After confirming the proper abbreviation in the appendices, we include the parallel citations. As a final step, we review the citation and double check punctuation. The period after the ink is removed, commas uh, separate the elements of the reference, and there is a period at the end of the reference. And there we have it, a complete citation to a court case.